All right. I'd like to start off by saying Barakate Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Racha Kodash. Welcome to another live lesson. Um, this one's pretty much called IUIC's answer about Malachi 4, 5, and 6. And um, this was sent to me, so just kind of want to do a brief video on it. You know, if the spirit allows me to go longer, I will. Uh, if not, then I'll just go as far as the spirit allows. Because this this comment that was put on this video here, hashtag IUIC, TD Jakes and the Pope, shout out Tuesdays, which is posted October 6th. You know, a brother asked a question, and the the uh, whoever deals with this IUIC events um, um, YouTube page gave the brother an answer. Now, what you're gonna notice anytime you know IUIC answers, you know, especially when they know it's a GMS, then when they answer, they pretty much answer in a um degrading down talking you know like 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 uh you're beneath me you know i'm better than you stand by you know stand over there by your side you know don't 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 come near me don't even touch me don't even step to me it's an inside joke but that's how they look at it like like they're so high and mighty and that we're just so beneath them you know like we're just such such uh, the dirt and the off-scarring as the scriptures speak about. But the Lord said that those are smoke, smoke in his nose. And Shalom to the Akim and the Akwaf, you know, the elders and the um, brothers that are in the uh, comment board and watching. You know, Yahweh Bashim Yashah broke a thumb to you sincere brothers out there. Um, so I'm just going to read this comment here. I got one precept, and if anything else pops up, we'll go into it. Because, you know, like that that's how they act. You know, like in Isaiah 65, it speaks about them being a smoke in the most high's nose. Like they're better than us, you know. Like they're so much smarter than us. And when they don't realize that that's how we've been, we were treated back at One West. You know, we were called F Troop, you know. I mean, brothers from, you know, Connecticut, we were called F Troop. You know, we were looked down upon. But the Lord said that his secrets are with the meek. They were called bummelites. These guys are constantly insulting us. Then, then this dude, uh, Deacon Asaph, a while back, he said he's not going to say those things about us anymore. So I don't know if he reverted back to that or if, if Nate had a stiff talking with him, you know, and said, you know, what the hell's wrong with you? I don't, I don't, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but. Obviously, they didn't stop doing it because they're still doing it, you know. Um, anyways, let's just get to it. Uh, this is IUIC events, uh, TD Jakes and the Pope. Um, when we sc scroll through it, what I did was I sorted the comments because, you know, there was there's 250 comments. So there was all kind of comments. So I just sorted the comments by the newest first because I know the brother just put up that video, uh, that comment not too long ago. So I was reading, looking through here, looking for his comment, and this guy used to come up on a on a on a comment board. You know, you got guys that come on GMS comment boards. They come on, you know, uh, uh, IUIC comment boards, IACPK. You know, these guys are, are children tossed to and fro. Anyway, Israelite covenant ba Sh shalom. Do y'all teach Abba Bivens is the fulfillment of Malachi four, five, and six? You know, and this is what Apostle Tar, you know, told brothers to ask. Now, this is the guy. I don't know who it is. I don't know if this is Nate or if it's one of his underlings or whatever. It says, we teach to ignore Tahar, who says he got 100% truth. So pretty much they're not really teaching it out of the sincerity of their heart because they believe it. They're teaching it to spite Apostle Tar to ignore him because he says that, you know, we say that we have 100% truth. And I'm just going to be honest with you. This is just my personal opinion, my personal feeling on it. When I was watching uh, Deacon Athun going into that whole thing, when he was breaking it down, the way he was breaking it down, yeah, 1969. Oh, was that Abba? Yeah, 1969. Uh, he pretty much was just saying it, but he doesn't really believe it. 
you know. Now, that's just my personal opinion. He could come back and say, no, I believe it, you know, but I personally feel and believe, you know, in the spirit that he doesn't believe that. He's just saying it and pushing it out there because of this. Like it says, we teach to ignore Tahar, who says he got 100% truth, but speak about IUIC every week and send simple niggas like you to our page to make him feel good. So see, they're always on the constant attack. What did Yahushai say? Yahushai said, you know, pray for them that despitefully use you, right? Don't the scripture say, you know, uh, um, um, do good to him, you know? And, and you know, I can't remember the full quote of the scripture, you know, but but are these guys, these guys are not, they're not um, exhibiting that, you know? But anyway, this is what the brother said. A simple yes or no would have worked just fine, but I guess that's too much for you guys. So pretty much they're not really teaching that Alba Bivens is uh, Elijah coming back because they really believe it. They're just doing it out of spite. You know, they're just doing it. Like he said, we teach to ignore Tar. you know. So he, he didn't say, uh, you know, um, that they believe it. Just like uh, um, Deacon Nathan, when he was going into it, he never really said that Abba is Elijah. But he did, but like in a roundabout way. Or I'm not going to say, you know, y'all know. I'll leave it to y'all. You know, because I mean, like I said, personally, I don't think he believes it. You know, and this brings to mind, the first scripture that came to mind was the book of Philippians. Now, the the point is down here, which, you know, we're going to get. Um, It's going to go to the point. I start at 12, Philippians 1 and 12. But I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. And this is why, you know, the apostle Paul was saying, certain things when he would go through adversities he would um speak on them and tell it to the, these different churches not to exalt himself and say oh wow this man is such a great man of the lord because he's catching all kind of hell for yahweh by shim shai no but he did it for the furtherance of the gospel to help those brothers out there that may have been nervous about moving in the spirit you know, to, to move in the spirit by saying, look, I do, I'm do i doing this and look what's happening to me. I'm catching all kind of hell. So just to embolden br brothers to go ahead and, and do the work, right? So it says, so that my bonds in Yahweh Shire manifest in all the palace, this is dealing with Caesar, and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confidence, see, by my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. And when we, and when we were, when, YouTube first came up, and we got on there back in uh, 2007, and the Spirit had jumped on Elder Apostle Tar to tell brothers out there, you know, it was a Spirit speaking that you brothers should be having camps, you know, opening up camps. There should be a, a million camps or something like that. I don't remember the exact number. And then brothers started to be convicted. And going out there and teaching on the streets. And then we would, as we taught, we would go back into different uh, scenarios and different situations that we had dealt with. Because it was to help those brothers that were out there speak, uh, speaking and teaching that they were going to go through these things. You know? So they were kind of breaking the ice. Like we told them we got arrested and this happened. And we got arrested many times and this happened and that happened. And people came against us. So that when it happened to them, they said, okay, well, you know, the elders back there, we were called elders, you know, they were going, they they went through it. So no, so we're going to go through it. And when they actually went through it, they were comforted, right? It says some, in, now this is the point here. This is the point of the comment that this individual made, whoever wrote it. I don't know who wrote it. Somebody, a member of IUSC wrote it. We teach to ignore to our who says he got 100% true. So it's not coming from the heart. It's coming from a uh, spite. The scriptures even even say, let's say, let's say that Apostle Tar was was uh, doing saying whatever he was saying in, in, uh, out of malice, which he's not. But let's just say that's the case. The scriptures say, render not evil for evil. So these guys, the same guys that harp so much on the law, when it comes to keeping the law, they don't keep it, and that's why. Matter of fact, I just got to get this real quick. Matthew twenty three. And 
three, it says, all therefore whatsoever they, they bid you observe, that observe and do. So if they tell you to do something, no, the law says this, the law says that, yeah, keep it. But do not after their works. For they say and do not. Yeah, they'll tell you one thing, but they're not doing it. You see? And, and the Lord is going to break that whole thing up. Why? Because they don't have the foundation of that stone, of that rock, Yahweh Shai. Because they keep calling on Christ, Most High and Christ blessed. Now, we say Most High, you know, but we also use his name, Yahweh, and his son's name, Yahweh Shai. And the only time we use so-called Jesus or so-called Christ is when, you know, um, we're trying to make a point or uh, um, breaking down that whack-ass stronghold or uh, to someone that may not understand and say who you ignorantly call uh, so-called Jesus Christ, you know? But that's the only time we would use that. Mostly we, we uh, use Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you know? Uh, so let's read that again. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. So they're not doing what the Lord said to do. The Lord said, pray for your enemies. Do good unto them that would do bad unto you. I can't, like I said, Salaki, I can't remember the exact quote right now. So it says in uh, Philippians 1.15, some indeed preach Yahweh even of envy and strife. Let's look those two words up. Envy which the word envy is thonos, thonos, envy, for envy, an example prompted by envy, ill will, see? This comment is ill will comment. We teach not because it's the truth, but we teach to ignore Tahar who says he has 100% truth. Now, if he would have just said, yes, we teach that, you know, we believe that our Bivens, you know, is uh, Elijah the prophet, you know, coming back, and uh, John the Baptist? You couldn't go. You couldn't go anywhere with with that. But you could tell by this that they have a deep rooted hatred for us. And the scriptures say, "He that hated his brother without a cause." You know, matter of fact, let's get that real quick. What is that? First John, is that First John four. Mm. I haven't gone to that scripture in a long time. Um, mm. Just bear with me a second. Here we go. Matthew 5, 22. I thought I, I, I know I wasn't bugging. I was like, damn, am I bugging? It says, but I said, Matthew 5, 22, but I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So they're angry with us without a cause. We don't, we never we don't, we never gave them the cause to be angry with us. The reason why they're mad is because you know we're telling them that they're going off and they are going off, you know, and they refuse to correct uh themselves. And what did the scripture say to those that refuse to correct themselves after you constantly give them reproof? Because that is not something that is practiced among these different camps. They don't practice reproving each other, rebuking each other. You know, they just allow each other to go ahead and do what, whatever the hell they want to do, especially those unity camps. And that's danger right there. Proverbs 21 and 9, I mean 1, Proverbs 29 and 1. He that being often reproved, meaning constantly being corrected. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. And this, you gotta understand, this is totally the spirit. We don't wake up one morning, you know, you know what? 
I'm feeling kind of good today, man. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna get on IUIC today. No, I'm going to get on IACBK today. You know what? Today is GOCC day. No, this is all spiritual, man. The way it ha happens is spiritual because there's so much, there's so many other things to speak about, so many other prophecies and so many other, you know, new technology and different things that could be spoken of and the uh, hard times that are coming and all that. But the spirit... You know, we're guided by the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Shai. The Lord is the one that guides our spirit in our mouth, you know, to teach and say these different things. Why? Because the Lord has given them reproof. And what are they doing? They're slapping the Lord's reproof out of the way. You know? Proverbs 122. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity and scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? See? Because if you're wrong and somebody corrects you, you should take the correction if you're a wise man. Scripture say, rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. But if you rebuke a fool, the fool is going to hate you. So these guys are hating us without a cause. It says, turn you up my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Yeah, and the Lord is pouring his spirit unto you, but you're not turning at his reproof. I will make known my words unto you. And that's why the Lord is reproving. Because obviously you're going down the wrong route. So the Lord is using his men to correct you. It says, because I have called and you refuse. I have stretched out my hand and no man regard it. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Because it's going to be a terrible thing when the Lord starts really opening up on these individuals. When your fear cometh as, the, uh, uh, as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. See, they shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Why? Because they're looking at all oh, those the, them bums are saying that. Nah, we can't accept that. And to this day, they call us bums. And brothers work. But we're just the bum camp. But that's all right because we wear that proudly because that, man, this goes back to the days. This goes back to one West with you. This goes inside joke. This goes back to the to, to the Lahabian uh, days. The, oh, okay, okay, that, okay, Connecticut. Okay, that's F Troop, okay? So we was F Troop back then. Today we're bummer lights, you know, but hey, we'll wear, we'll wear it proudly. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. Yeah, because they're serving their own belly. They're not serving Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. That's what they keep saying. Christ, Christ, Christ. You know? And Jesus. That madness. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And they will be destroyed. But but like we always say, see, we say this. They don't no, nobody else says this about us, but we say it about all the other different camps that you have elect within them that the Lord is going to bring out of there, out of that madness. Out of that motley crewness. <laughs> but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So going back to Proverbs 29 and 1, he that being often reproved, you constantly being corrected, hardeneth his neck, meaning you don't listen. You become stiff hearted, stiff necked, shall suddenly, all of a sudden, be destroyed. So they're going to be suddenly destroyed. Let me see, let's see what suddenly means. Maybe it means something else. Pathai, pathai, suddenness in an instant, meaning quickly, just like that, out of nowhere, in the blinking of an eye. So it says, he that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly, quickly, out of nowhere, at the blink of an eye, be destroyed. And that without remedy. Why? Because the remedy is here. This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, but they would not. So now let's look up that word remedy. And that without remedy. Ma rapa, yeah, rapa is healing. And ma is over from, over from healing. Health, healing, cure, healing, cure, health, profit, sound. Yeah, because sometimes the Lord could jack you up and it'll just be something to smack you around a little bit to bring you back to your senses. Let's go to Hosea. 
chapter 5, verse 15. It says, I will go and return to my place where they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. See, they will seek me early. So when the Lord can smack you around a little bit or smack us around a little bit just to get us in the right frame of mind to start coming to him and, and, um, and acknowledging our offenses and humbling ourselves. But if this is constantly going on, where the Lord is constantly reproving and reproving and reproving, and the individual doesn't change, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to have judgment from the Lord without any remedy. It says incurable with negative. Healing incurable with negative, see? So there will be no healing. There will be no remedy for those that, that are often being corrected and they harden their neck. They will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. All right, so now let's go back. So let's read that again. Some indeed preach how we should have envy and strife. And we read about the envy and the envy pretty much means envy now let's look up the word strife it is it is contention strife wrangling wrangling when you when something is wrangled man it's mangled all right let's look up contention real quick contention heated disagreement isn't this a heated disagreement we teach to ignore Taha who says he got 100 percent truth but speak about IUIC every week and send simple niggas like you to our page to make him feel good. First of all, Elder Pastor ain't sending nobody to your page. He he told he did tell brothers to, to uh, ask you if you believe in this, but the Elder Pastor don't be sending uh, um, brothers to your comment boards to to uh, um, say certain things to y'all to make him feel good. He's not he's not um what's the word I'm looking for. He's not a, uh, um, there's a word that just came to mind and just left. He's not insecure. He's not insecure about his position or what he teaches, you know? But you guys, you got that something on you. Every time you look around, you like like spooked, you know? And all we're doing is just correcting you in the spirit, man. With the words of Yahweh by Shemel Shad, but you refuse correction because your leader Nate, your leader Nate, he refuses to humble himself. This dude is proud, and he refuses to humble himself. So now going back, so contention is heated disagreement and an assertion, especially when maintained an argument. All right, so now let's see what the other one was. The other one was wrangling. Wrangling, engagement in a long, complicated dispute or argument. Just like the Apostle Paul went to this one uh, um, Tyrannus, I believe it was, his school. And you know what he did? They, they were going back and forth so much that it took... It's uh, uh, the apostle Paul was there contending with the with these with this dude in his school for two years. It was an engagement in a long, complicated dispute or argument. I know the brother's been putting up some banging scriptures, so I'm gonna read a couple of these. Oh, uh, wow! All right, so I'm gonna start off. I started off at Yasha out of the chosen Salaka, you know. Uh Matthew 7 24. Therefore, whosoever hear with these sayings of mine and do with them, I will liken it, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine doeth and, and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man, also the foolish virgins which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. That's right. So now uh, GMS shine the gospel. 
Proverbs 3.11, my son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. Yeah, because the scriptures say, whom the Lord loveth, he, he rebuketh and, and uh, chastises often. Uh, Amanah, 1 Corinthians 3.18, let no man de deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Uh, right, this is a good one. GMS Saints of the Most High, 2 Chronicles 36.16. But they mock the messengers of the Most High and despise his words and misuse his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Uh, Elder Yashawama, Jeremiah 23, 27, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. As their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. And Jesus the Christ, or Jesus Christ, that's nothing more than another name for Baal. Uh, GMS Memphis Calabia, Proverbs 6.23, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and the re and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. A proud look, yep, yep, hella proud, yep, that's right. Uh, damn, I lost my spot that fast. Shit. All right, so yeah, brothers, brothers are lighting it up. So, <laughs> woo! All right, so you know what? I'm just gonna go back to this. So, Eris wrangling. So let's read that again. Uh, Philippians 1:15. Some indeed preach I was shy, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. So you have those that preach in the goodwill, and some that preach for envy and strife. And by this comment, you can see here, you know, that that's envy and strife. Excuse me. That's not of sincerity. That's not of goodwill. And like I said, I'll say it again. This is just my personal opinion. I was watching Deacon of Thun doing his thing. And pretty much, to be honest with you, what I got from it, the way he was teaching was that he just wanted to get through it. And every time them guys cut him off to make a point. He was just like, you know, you could tell in his spirit, he was like, man, just let me finish it, you know? Like, he doesn't really believe that. And they're just teaching it out of strife. We teach to ignore Tahar, who says he got 100% truth. You know, but speak about IUIC every week. We don't speak about IUIC every week. It's a, and send simple niggas like you to our page to make him feel good. This was unnecessary. This was totally unnecessary. The man asks you, Shalom, do y'all teach? Abba Bivens is a film of Malachi 4 and 5 and 6. You got all this. And he said, a simple yes or no would have worked just fine, but I guess that's too much for you guys. And notice he never came back and said anything because he was cut by, by the comment that the brother made. You know? I mean, that was an hour ago, but still. So... It goes on to say, the one preacher I wish I have contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Yeah, because they think that by them calling us bums and bummelites and this, that, and the other, that that's, that that's going to add affliction to, to our bonds. Look, the Lord, the afflictions that we receive are going to be sufficient that the Lord gave for us to, to bear. Whatever you say or whatever you do is not going to add more to our bonds. It's not going to add more to our afflictions, you know, because each individual brother here in Great Millstone has a certain amount that is put upon them, and that's it. Because someone doesn't believe or because someone has some uh, uncomfortable words that they want to say or, or some BS that they want to say is not going to add more to our afflictions and our bonds. So it says the one preacher I will shy of contention, I believe... Nope. You know what? Let's look up that word contention. Erithaa, Erithaa, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Ele electioneering or intriguing for office. Hmm. Apparently in the New Testament, a courting distinction, a desire to put oneself forward, a partisan and fractious spirit, which does not disdain low arts. Hmm. 
partisanship, fractionist, fractiousness. The same word was found before New Testament times only in Aristotle, one of the notes, a self-seeking pursuit of political office by unfair means. Yeah, that's contention. So that they can put themselves in a better light. Uh, Paul exhorts the church to be one in the mind of Yahweh not putting self forward or being selfish. That's right. Taking the low. Uh, Philippians 2 and 3 and James 3 14 speaks against having selfishness or self-promoting in your heart. And that's what they're doing. They're not doing that. See, the, see, uh, uh, like uh, the Apostle Torah said, uh, Nate, Nate is a, a, a demon, man. Because he knew eventually, you know, this would, uh, uh, he knew eventually this would come out. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a snake for you, man. He put it out there, you know, that way, no, no, uh, just to, to, uh, uh, like he said here, we teach to ignore Tahar, who says he got 100% truth. Now, I don't know if this was Nate himself, seeing that he did this video. If he had to be, happen to be on the comment board, man, I, I got to stop going up there, man. <laughs> I can't keep looking at that face, man. Um, uh, properly intrigue, an example by implication, faction, contention. So now let's look up the word contention in the common dictionary. Contention, heated disagreement, which we, which we read earlier from the, uh, the other word that we looked up, either envy or strife. All right, let's see what else we got. Not sincerely. Sincerely is hagnos, which is holy, chaste, clean, pure, with sincerity, which is which is uh um no, I'm sorry, not 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 uh, holy, uh clean, yeah, clean and pure. Cause um I'm thinking about hagios. Hagios is is uh holy, which I mean, you know, I guess you could say it's holy because chaste, clean, pure, uh sincere. Speech is holy speech. All right. So the one preacher, I wish I had contention. I sincerely suppose I add afflictions to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. That's right. And this goes into that um, apologetics. It says, what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in uh, pretense or in truth, Yahweh is preached, and now therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Why? Because you have to have both sides. And this is what individuals don't understand. You got to have both sides. You know, sometimes brothers get mad. Oh, man, oh, why this guy got to oh. get all mad and frustrated? And we, you know, we get mad and frustrated sometimes too. But it's necessary. It's very necessary. It's very necessary. You take off your shoes. Salaka, that's an inside joke. Because um, you have to have both sides. You know, you can't have one. Without the other, you know, you have joy, you have pain, you have sunshine, and you have rain. <laughs> it's a lot of brothers. I guess the dove hour has arrived. <laughs> um. Okay, here we go. Please, yeah, Salak. Salak here, Salak here. Um, please ask us forty-two and twenty-four. All things are double one against another, and he has made nothing imperfect. So you're going to have to have two. It says, one thing establishes the good or another, and who shall be filled with beholding his glory? Because you have duality. You know, you have the good side, and you have the bad side. You have the righteous, and you have the wicked. You know, hey, brother, you're going to start making me crack up again, man. <laughs> I'm trying to bite my, my tongue, my, my upper lip, so I don't. I don't keep laughing, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, here we go. Ecclesiastes 33, 14. Good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another. So you're going to have to have this. You know, you're going to have to have the... This is why the Apostle Paul, because see, the Apostle Paul understood very well what he was saying. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Yahweh is preached, 
and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Why? Because he knows that they ha that you have to have both. You have to have both sides. 2 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now, thanks be unto the most high, which always causes us to triumph in your house, <laughs> It says, and make it manifest. See, how the most high always causes us to triumph in your house, whether people accept it or not, whether they mock us, ridicule us or not, right? It says, um, hey, Shalom, uh, hey, Shalom, uh, Yarazayun. It says, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. So when we teach, this is like a sacrifice, the calves of our lips. This is that sweet smelling savor that replaced the sacrifices of meat, you know? It says, for we are unto the most high a sweet savor of Yahweh Shai. So every time we speak, the Most High remembers the sacrifice that Yahweh Shai gave. It says, in them that are saved and in them that perish, because whether or not they accept it or not, we're still smelling right in the sight of the Lord. You know, because it tells us, um, let's see if I can find that real quick. Isaiah 49, 6, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also uh, give thee for a light to the Gentiles, Israelite foreigners, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Um, right here, I'm sorry, I jumped, I jumped too far down. Isaiah 49 and 4. It says, then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught. Yeah, because sometimes I feel like, you know, Jake ain't listening. They ain't trying to hear this. But that's all right. Don't worry about it. It says, and in vain, yet surely my judgment. Yeah, because it feels like that. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, and my work. See? And my work with my power. And now, say of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, that formed me from the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Because that's what the Lord set us up to. From the womb, he set us up to do what we do to bring Jacob back to him again. Though Israel be not gathered, see, even though they don't listen, even though we be a savior of death unto them, right? And them that are saved and them that, are, that perish, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Why? Because we're doing what we're supposed to do. And my power shall be my strength. So going back to 2 Corinthians 2.15, for we are unto the most high a sweet savor of Yahweh Shai and them that are saved and in them that perish. Because regardless if they are to be saved or not, the, the work of the Lord is still going to go through and the laborers are still going to receive their pay. Because there are some that are going to listen and, and, and accept it, not as many, to be saved. And there's going to be a lot that are going to reject it and be destroyed. But the laborer is still going to get that penny. To the one we are the savior of death unto death. Why? Because to some Israelites out there, they hear this word. It's like, ah, you know, like it, 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 it makes their insides contort. It makes their insides wrangle, you know. It says, and to the other, savor of life unto life. It's like a sweet smelling savor. Like, wow, man, that what you're saying is so beautiful, you know. To the point where you hear something so prolific, you, you, you like left in awe, you know, or or you hear something so beautiful that it makes you makes your eyes tear up because it's just so beautiful, so breathtaking, you know, just like a, a vision or 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 you standing on, on, on a ridge somewhere and looking and seeing mountains and cascades and waterfalls and different trees and greenery. And, and the uh, moss that's on the uh, sides of the mountains, and it's so beautiful and how the sun hits it, you know, there's the sun shimmying off, you know, the uh, moss and, and that, that, that uh, uh, effervescent feeling you feel inside, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's awe-inspiring, you know, like if you look at a field of flowers and you see all the different flowers and the different colors and how they're arrayed, it's, it's beautiful, it's breathtaking. That's how this word is to those that are to be saved. It says, and who is sufficient for these things? So the one that is set unto death, the word is going to be repugnant to them. The ones that this is set to life for, this word is going to be beautiful, a, a fountain of, of, of water, you know, a, uh, a spring of water 
in a, a dry, deserted land. You see? It says, so we are not as many which corrupt the word of the Most High. Now, and we teach the word of the Lord. That's why we say we have 100% truth because we're teaching it the way it's supposed to be taught. And we're not corrupting it. You have some individuals out there that are corrupting the word for money. They're teaching different doctrines. They're throwing different uh, uh, demonic symbols, you know, because they're in, in, uh, uh, on the take. They took that bag. It says, but as it said, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of the most high, but as of sincerity, but as of the most high, in the sight of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, or in the sight of Yahweh, speak we in Yahweh Shai. So whenever the Lord looks at us through the mirror of Yahweh Shai, you know, he be, he being the middleman between us, the most high sees, you know, the this great uh, uh, uh work that's being done. And the great sacrifice that Yahweh Shai uh, did. So, in the sight of the Lord, we speak in Yahweh Shai. All right, and that's pretty much all I had. You know, I mean, you could, like I said, you could read the comment for yourself, and you could see, you know, that um, that this is not a sincere comment. This is this is a comment of contention and strife, not in sincerity. And this is why they're teaching it. And like I said, I'll say it one more time. I believe that Deacon of Thun doesn't really believe that. He's just teaching it because either he was told to teach it, you know, or I, I mean, I, I can't go any, any any other way with it because I don't know for sure. I don't know if Nate told him to teach that or whatever the case is. Or, But, but by this comment, we could tell that they're not teaching it from sincerity. And when I watched the video, I'll just be honest. Deacon Asaph to me, I'm sorry, not Asaph, Deacon Athun to me doesn't believe that. You know, I could be wrong. He could come back and say, no, I believe it 100%, and I just have to take his word on it. But I watched him, you know, and I don't I don't think he believes that. But that's just my opinion on it. So with that, you know, I pray that your brothers uh, have been edified. To the next time I say, Shalom.